Hi, I am Aruna Surya and I contribute to BISC. BISC is a decentralized cryptocurrency exchange. I'm here with Manfred Carrere, who founded BISC. In the previous video, we talked about the technical aspect of BISQ tokens. And in this video, we will focus on the economics side of the BISQ. So just to uh, summarize briefly what we talked about in the previous video, uh, as far as I understand, a BSQ token, the purpose of the BSQ token is to transfer the value from users of BISC, uh, which is traders, to contributors who maintain and improve BISC. Uh, Manfred, can you elaborate more on that? Yeah, uh, you brought it actually to the point already. <coughs> the PSQ token is uh, is the vehicle which allows this value exchange from the users who are consuming the, uh, the, the software BISC as a service for enabling them to make peer-to-peer -peer trades uh, to those who are building it, who are providing the service. So we are the developers who are working on it, people who are maintaining the software and improving it people who are helping uh, on support to explain it to other people, to communicate and so on. So anybody who adds value to the project is basically a contributor. And those who are consuming the value which the project creates are yeah, usually the, yeah, the traders. Uh, and um, we are in the lucky position that we are in an area where people are used to pay a, tra a fee for their service. That's not, uh, unfortunately, not in everywhere in the internet business and then it uh, has led to weird business model where people start to sell user data because they couldn't charge a fee luckily in the exchange world it's very usual that uh, people are paying directly for the service and then the exchanges don't do other secondary businesses <laughs> and uh, so we are taking this very straight and honest model at the end that you just taking money for the service what you deliver and uh, yeah and, and the, this trading fee gets distributed to all their stakeholders and that's a little bit a more complex process how to do this in a really in a decentralized way when it would be a normal company it would be easier you take uh, the fee and you're paying your employees or whatever but uh, we are not the company and so we have developed the BISC DAO and the BSQ token as a system which fulfills this uh, needs and requirements in a fully decentralized and trust-minimized way. And we can talk about the uh, <clears throat> details of distributing these few tokens in uh, next videos. In the next video, and uh, what is the incentive for uh, BISC traders to use BISQ in the first place? Uh, I think BISC is, is mostly attractive for traders who care about privacy and the value of decentralization and the basic value proposition of Bitcoin itself. I mean, those who just want to send money from point A to point B for a cheap rate, they can use PayPal as well when they don't care about the underlying values of Bitcoin. And I think all those people who understand and who <coughs> care about those values, they are very attracted by BISC because we are following the same principles. And, uh, and especially about privacy with centralized exchange, you lose basically completely your privacy. And that can be problematic on many areas, not only on the surveillance side from the governments, but on the, on the criminal side, when this exchange gets hacked, then some criminals have all your trading data and know how many BISC, in, BISC you have and your address and so on. That's not a funny situation at the end. And actually the government should pr pr protect us against this and not should force the exchanges into this uh, stupid model. But do BISC uh, traders get a discount if they use BSQ as trading fees versus Bitcoin? Yeah, so that's the, the change with the, as soon as the BISC DAO is on mainnet, uh, the traders can choose to pay the trading fee in BSQ or they stay with the old model in Bitcoin. And when they choose to uh, pay in BSQ, they get more, uh, roughly a 90% discount. So it's, uh, yeah, it's just 10% of the fees, more or less, like when they would pay uh, in Bitcoin. And we want to motivate and incentivize people to move over to the BS, uh, yeah, paying fees in BSQ because uh, yeah, that's the core of their economic model for the BSQ and for the DAO. Otherwise, uh, it would not work. <laughs> And um, yeah, the way how the fees are paid, as so the fees are not paid to anybody. I mean, 
the fees in Bitcoin at the moment are paid to the arbitrators. Mm. Uh, but when the DAO is out with BSQ, their BSQ fees are not paid to any person or any direct uh, recipient. Uh, they are burned, and by burning BSQ tokens, as we have already a little bit um, discussed in other videos, uh, we are distributing it to all existing stakeholders. We are, yeah, these tokens get removed from the total supply, and by that, every unit of the token has a little bit more value. And that creates, at the end, a, a deflationary pressure. So the more tokens which get uncolored, which get destroyed as BSQ tokens, they, uh, yeah, the less tokens are in circulation and every token become more value because when there are fewer units of tokens for the total value of the project, uh, every unit has a little bit more value. So that creates deflation. And actually, they're, they're <clears throat> technically, it's not destroyed or whatever. They are used as mi for a mining fee in Bitcoin. Uh, but we don't want to get into this technical uh, stuff again with uh, color coins. <clears throat> uh, yeah, that's the one side. And on the other side, we have the inflationary pressure uh, when uh, contributors are making the compensation request that they get paid for their work. And uh, then also they don't get paid by anybody. They pay themselves and get authorized by voting from the DAO. And by creating new tokens, uh, similar like a miner in Bitcoin, they are, yeah, they are creating inflation at the end because after a voting round, there are more tokens in circulation and every token lose a little bit of value. And this balance between inflation and deflation is at the end the monetary policy in this, which is uh, decided by the stakeholders ultimately. They can change their, by accepting contribution requests uh, or, uh, or rejecting it, they can influence how much money get created, how much are they are spending on contributors. And by changing the trading fee, the amount of the trading fee can be changed in voting. They can uh, yeah, they can regulate their the revenue stream from the from the trading side. So they have basically all the tools in place to regulate uh, yeah, the rate of inflation and the rate of deflation. And of course it's not uh, completely independent. It's a lot of about the overall success of the project and what trader are and of course, they have to be smart to not say, no, we don't want to spend any money and then this is not maintained and we are losing a lot of traders and the overall effect will be very negative. So it's probably like in every startup, uh, a good idea at the beginning to have a higher inflation, to spend more money like actually is coming in, but to invest this uh, in future that, uh, yeah, that the project is developing in a good direction and uh, more traders are using it and then future revenue will be higher. So as far as I understand, the supply of BSQ tokens is determined by the uh, amount of compensation requests, which uh, act as an inflationary force, and the fees, trading and voting fees, which act as the deflationary force. Yeah. Uh, so how is the... Maybe you can talk uh, about the initial supply of BSQ tokens uh, briefly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It starts with a Genesis uh, transaction where we are distributing two and a half million BSQ to all the past stake, uh, all the past contributors in the project. Everybody who has worked uh, for the project when we do the Genesis transaction will be part of the receivers for this two and a half million BSQ. And very clear to say, it's not an ICO. We are not selling tokens. It's a completely different model. And uh, yeah. With that, it starts, and then every month we're doing this voting process where contributors make their compensation requests for uh, that they are enabled to create new BSQ for their work, and the voters are deciding if this work was valuable for BISC or not, that they have the right to create these tokens. So every month there will be a round where at the moment we have roughly 50,000 BSQ what we are creating every month. We are doing this DAO model already since a year in a more manual and not decentralized, not trustless way, but on a social and on a organizational uh, level, it already works since a year. We're practicing this and we get uh, uh, yeah, some experience with that and it works surprisingly well. <coughs> so, yeah. And uh, can you talk about uh, forces that uh, influence the value of the BSQ token? 
So right now you mentioned that it's based on the uh, Bitcoin blockchain. So it has the initial value and then how can it change and what affects it? Yeah, so the minimum value of BSQ is basically the underlying Bitcoin value of the color coin. So it cannot be below this. For creating two and a half million BSQ, we are using two and a half Bitcoin. So the value of this two and a half Bitcoin is basically their absolute minimum value, cannot go to zero. Uh, but of course, we hope that the project of the value is much higher like this two and a half Bitcoin. And it ultimately depends on the, on the market. I mean, when the, when the genesis is out, every contributor who has tokens can sell it on the market and the traders who are the main uh, candidates for buying those tokens for using it for uh, trading fees but of course anybody else can buy it as well it's completely it's like in any other cryptocurrency it can be traded in BISC and uh, yeah it, it depends I mean it will be for sure initially a volatile time where the market need to find a fair value for the project but at the end, it's probably similar like a startup uh, getting money from investors and the investors make evaluation and think, yeah, that's more or less that value. And of course, nobody knows what's the real value. It's a very subjective, uh, risky uh, enterprise. And I think, yeah, we will go through this phase and over time, hopefully become more stable and more, um, yeah, more mature. But in the first months, I expect to be for sure that it will be which were pretty volatile until a stable market has uh, developed. And and what are the ways of acquiring these few tokens now and in the future? As so of now, you cannot buy it. It's not out. Um, it's just the contributors they receive uh, basically these tokens on a spreadsheet. And we have, of course, this social contract in a way that uh, when we would change our plans and not pay the contributors, we would kill the project. And everybody yeah, will fork the project and uh, will feel this as betraying the contributors. But there is no hard guarantee for this. There are no contracts. There are no legal contracts or whatever. And there is no blockchain-based security behind this. So it's a, uh, yeah, it's a very trust. Uh, so it's based on, on trust to the to the BISC community that they are going on or with the plans like like uh, plan yeah, like it was intended. Uh, when the uh, yeah when the DAO is out on mainnet, hopefully in two or three months, we are now on testnet already. So everybody is highly uh, welcome to help us testing and playing around with it. Um, so when it's out, then it's just like any altcoin in BISC. So you go to your altcoin account. Or uh, type in BSQ and you create your uh, your account there with your receiving address for BSQ and you can buy you can t make an offer or take an offer uh, from BISC, um, BSQ holders who have already BSQ which are initially only their contributors who receive BSQ from the Genesis transaction and yeah people can can trade like any other altcoin. Um, what are the incentives for contributors to earn BSQ tokens in the first place? Uh, to, to earn BSQ tokens? Yes. Uh, I mean, they can sell it when they, um, when they are under financial pressure and need to pay the bill and they earn whatever, 5,000 BSQ a month and need to sell 4,000 BSQ to pay their bills. They just sell it the next day on the market and some traders who will uh, buy it for benefiting from this discounted trade fee. They are the potential buyers or anybody else who is interested to, uh, to um, become stakeholder of BSQ. I mean, um, to be stakeholder of BSQ has other functions as well, like voting and so on and bonding. Or about the, I don't want to get distracted too much in other details. Uh, <coughs> so, yeah, it's basically their payment. Like when you're working for a company, you get paid and you are not get paid here in euro or dollar, so you have to convert it first to Bitcoin and then to dollar or euro or whatever. Uh, but those who want to do it, they can do it um, more or less depending on the market and liquidity, but uh, should should work out more or less uh, fast. I assume that most contributors are more the holders who who want to hold because also the more BSQ you have, the more weight you will have in voting. So those who really care about the project want to uh, collect more 
influence in the project. The more PSQ you have, when there's important decision and you have more PSQ, your voice has more weight. And um, yeah. So there are several incentives. One is just to uh, have to use it um, in the future to, to um, exchange it for Bitcoin and for uh, other currencies, uh, fiat currencies, and also to be able to have more voice or weight in partic when participating in the BISC project. Great. Yeah. And go ahead. There's another point, contributor has another important uh, feature, which is bonding. So when you as a contributor want to take an important role, like operating a seed node, then, and you earn money then by operating a seed node, uh, you have to set up a bond where you're basically locking in some PSQ and you need to have this PSQ when you all the time sell all your PSQ, you cannot take a, a bonded role because yeah, you don't have PSQ left for this. And these bonds are rather a little bit higher because they are the kind of like a security feature to, uh, to yeah, ensure that this uh, people or these persons who are taking this uh, roles that they're really taking care and are not abusing their, their role or are not sloppy. Uh, and so it's something like minimum 5,000 PSQ. And what is the incentive for contributors to put up a bond in the first place? Uh, if they succeed, if they don't break the contract, do they get rewarded with something it's, extra? Or not? Uh, it's basically also they get paid for their role what they're taking like running a seed node <clears throat> and depending on the bond size the payment will be higher so when you only have to lock up 2000 psq or 5000 psq uh, your monthly payment for this role will be lower like when you have to lock up 20000 psq it's a kind of like interest rate payment when you are willing to lock up this 20000 psq and take basically the risk when that it could be theoretically confiscated when you really make a big mistake or whatever, then uh, you should get the reward for this every month. And the reward is by contribution request. Mm -hmm. So you, when you're a seat node operator, you put whatever amount. I mean, the amount is at the end decided by the stakeholders. At the moment, we have a very low amount, which is already much higher, like the actual costs is. But with the bond, we will increase these amounts because we want to include then this kind of like interest payment for the bond. So with the the reward is commensurate with the risk. So the high risk roles have a higher reward. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like the, yeah, the arbitration will be the highest. That's probably hundred thousand or even more BSQ. Others like having the domain name for BISC is also a high, very yeah, very important uh, role and uh, could create a lot of damage, like we see with Bitcoin.com, uh, when somebody is abusing an uh, important domain name. <clears throat> and that's also probably something like 20 or 50,000 PSQ. So these numbers are not hardly defined. We have a proposal where I started to discuss what's the, which numbers we should use. Um, and everybody's welcome to give feedback there. But it's basically, it should reflect the maximum damage what a role owner could make on the project, which is hard to estimate, of course, in many areas. But yeah. Okay, and you also mentioned in the previous video that um, the, BS the value of uh, the BSQ tokens for past contributors who have not contributed in a while will decrease with time, if I understand you correctly. Yeah. Can, you, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, so we are using this meritocratic approach in voting <coughs> that um, contributors who do real work should, be, should get a higher weight uh, like people who are only buying their tokens on the market and the main motivation behind this because I believe that um, That those who are working directly on the project and have contributed and proven by this Contribution they are experts on the project. Otherwise their work would not have value and They know much more like somebody else who maybe have yeah, it's just a kind of like a investor who want to uh, quickly get in and have basically no real clue about the project and want to make some decisions and some of those uh, parameter changes which are possible like changing the trading fee they need a, lo a lot of thought it's not a good idea to increase the trading fee 10 times and you think then you have 10 times more revenue of course that doesn't work you lose a lot of traders so those are i mean that's a simple example where everybody understands uh, but they're more complex uh, parameters which and i mean when you look back on the bitcoin discussion last year with the block 
uh, size. Um, that's a good example that it's a complex decision where it's not good like when people like Roger Ware, who are only rich but have no clue about uh, the consensus systems at the end, that they try to make a lot of influence and decisions. And with the BISC DAO, with this meritocratic approach, we want to avoid that something, yeah, that it goes in this direction that economic, just rich people, economically rich people, uh, getting to high influence. And yeah, and this uh, decreases that when you have contributed a year and then not continue to contribute, you are probably not up to date with the project anymore. So your weight decrease over two years. So when you have earned 10,000 BSQ this month in two years, it has zero influence on the voting and it has okay. a decrease in half. In, in one year, you have uh, 5,000 BSQ from this 10,000 that's voting weight still. But after two years, it's basically uh, uh, gone. So it's the voting weight uh, that exactly. decreases. Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there, the, the, the BSQ, what you earn, of course, you can sell immediately. That's, that's not re directly related with voting, but you cannot sell your reputation away. So that you, with earning BSQ, you have basically the proof that you have contributed something valuable to BISC. And this kind, you could have this conceptual idea of a reputation token, which is not tradable because you cannot transfer this. Uh, but and it has a as a decrease in value. So when you are earning it, it has the full value. Over two years, it goes to zero, and you are taking. So when you do the voting, you are adding both this reputational token and your token, what you have as a BSQ, what you have in your wallet uh, together, and the sum of that is your voting weight. So when you have uh, earned in the past, in the last three months, uh, something like ten thousand BSQ, and you have five thousand BSQ in your wallet. Then you have the 10,000 uh, adjusted with this decay. That's then something like maybe 9,000 BSQ after three months, uh, plus the 5,000. So you have 14,000 BSQ as voting weight. And when somebody is buying on the market, 5,000 BSQ is only 5,000 BSQ. So you are voting weight, even if you have spent the money already and sold your BSQ in a big amount, you still have much more influence like uh, somebody who is not a contributor. So the components of the voting weight are uh, stake, or the amount of BSQ you currently hold, and yeah. the reputation. That exactly. Is so the BSQ, what you hold, you define how much you want to put in because it gets locked up uh, for a few days um, <clears throat> during the voting, so you cannot use it in this time. So probably you don't want to spend 100% of your BSQ, but whatever you want, or maybe 80%, maybe 20%. Maybe there are some uh, voting rounds where you think it's not important, there are no, everything is clear, and maybe sometimes there is uh, yeah, something very important to decide on, and then you put more weight in. So it's basically up to you, and you can, yeah, zero, you cannot, you need to put something in. The minimum is something like 10 BSQ, uh, but the rest is basically your decision. So uh, it, the incentive, it, it is to incentivize people to continue contributing to the project continuously, yeah. not only one time. Exactly. Yeah. Also, when you would apply to Satoshi, Satoshi would not have any voting with him when he had left the project and has not contributed anymore. But people who came new, like whatever, yeah, some uh, this, uh, Bitcoin contributors who have not been there in the early days, but have worked the last three, four years, continue would have a lot of value and they probably i don't know so Satoshi when he's still around he probably knows a lot what's going on in bitcoin as well but others who have left the project and are not active anymore they probably don't know the detail what's going on and probably it doesn't make sense that they have too much influence in in decision making and apart from uh from voting and um trading fees uh are there other ways where bsq is used as, as fees uh, to make a compensation request, uh, if you have to pay a fee. <coughs> the fee payment in that in this DAO functions are not primarily created for economic reasons. I mean, the trading fees are for economic reasons because that's the main uh, revenue stream where yeah, where revenue is created at the end for the project. The other fees are more in place to have a regulatory element when we would get too much spam compensation request and we have hundred requests and ATR basically irrelevant and get rejected anyway. It creates a lot of work for all the 
uh, voters yeah, to read this and to and yeah, when we would get in such a direction, we have the fee uh, as regulatory element, and we increase the fee up to really a high amount, and then those spammers will go away because probably they don't want to uh, to spend a hundred uh, BSQ or fifty BSQ to make a stupid uh, proposal, whatever. I um, mean, there are some proposal like a generic proposal where you can write anything. You can say uh, BISC should, whatever, support my shitcoin. I have a new shitcoin and please support it and make a proposal for this. And we don't want to get such proposals. I mean, that would be spam in my opinion. And when we would see that this becomes a problem, we will increase the fees. And for voting, it's a little bit similar. Uh, yeah, it should people should have some skin in the game to uh, be part of the DAO. It's uh, yeah. It... And um, the information about uh, BSQ stake is that going to be available somewhere? For instance, yeah. when voting, so that people can confirm. Yeah. yeah. Also, you everything is completely public on the also all these numbers. How much BSQ is in circulation? How much have been created? How much have been burned? That's all visible in the in the application directly. In the dashboard of the wallet, you can see all the statistical data, uh, also the basically the market capitalization of the project, or the the latest trade price multiplied by the available tokens, and uh, the result after a vote, or so when the vote is over, when the vote result is calculated, that's done in every client, and every client, every user can see all the details of every single vote how much stake and which part of this vote was earned BSQ and which was just normal BSQ. So yeah, there's a lot of details uh, for those who are interested to, um, yeah, to see all the details, how this vote, how this, the summary of or the, the, the total result was created from all the small vote uh, uh, item, yeah, was, um, the small votes from the contributors who have voted. So people can get information, that information easily. And yeah. also, um, if someone is interested in participating in the testnet right now, what can they do? How can they uh, do that? Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, <coughs> we, we have just had made a new release. So best is to uh, download the latest release. And there you go to settings. <coughs> and in the settings, you can change the network, the Bitcoin network from mainnet. Uh, to testnet, then you're restarting your application, then the application is starting up in testnet, that's completely separated, you don't need to worry with whatever data or wallet or get mixed up, that's completely isolated. And there, uh, to get your first BSQ, you can either take or make an offer to buy a BSQ from the other um, yeah, uh, people who, uh, who are using it already and who are um, uh, selling some. Or you just uh, post your BSQ address. You go uh, in, in the DAO menu, there is a wallet section. And in the wallet, you have to receive a uh, screen where you can receive BSQ, where you have then your BSQ address. And you just post this on, on our social media platforms like Slack or, uh, or in the forum. And then some of the other BIS contributors who have already test uh, net token they send you some BSQ just for testing out. I mean, it's at the moment, of course, it, there's no value behind it. Later, you cannot do this anymore. Or you can try it, but maybe you don't receive much. And yeah, you need some testnet or Bitcoin testnet. Also, there are some forces uh, where you get free uh, testnet Bitcoin. If you have big problems with getting this, you also can post uh, an address and somebody will send you a few testnet uh, tokens, uh, Bitcoins. Yeah, and then you can, uh, we have at the moment for testing, we have very short cycle. This cycle of voting, which is usually one month, roughly one month, we have uh, reduced to one week just to be, in, yeah, that it's not getting boring, that you have three times compensation requests and you cannot do much, nothing else this time, you only can make requests. So now we have uh, uh, compressed this to two days uh, time for making requests. So you can play around, you can make any request. It, yeah, it's irrelevant, it has no connection to reality. Uh, you can, after these two days, there's a, sh a short break of 10 blocks. And then there is the uh, voting phase <coughs> where you can vote on all the existing requests, including your 
uh, request. And it's basically as often the question, how should I vote on mine or whatever? As we cannot avoid that you are voting on your own request, the default is that you are accepting your own request. I mean, you probably will not reject it. So yeah, that's we, as technically or conceptually, there's no no good way to avoid this. Uh, it's basically best that we assume that every contributor is voting on his own request to accept it. And then there is uh, another uh, two days where you have to be, yeah, whether where your um, your private key, which was used for encrypting your vote, because when you vote, your vote is not readable to others; it's encrypted. That uh, yeah, for ensuring that there are no gaming, that otherwise there would be an incentive to wait until the last moment, because then you see what the other has voted, and you yeah, you have more influence at the end with this information. To avoid this, we have a blind voting, which uh, nobody sees what the others have voted. And after this voting phase is over, where you can do voting, there is the vote reveal phase, where um, you are publishing a transaction which contains your private key, and then everybody can decrypt your vote, what you have uh, done in the voting period. And you don't need to do anything actively in this phase. You only have to be an online one. So when you do the voting and you forget to start your application in this follow-up uh, vote reveal phase, your vote will be invalid because nobody can interpret your vote when it's encrypted. So it's very important to yeah, not forget to start just your application. And of course, you can do all kind of other stuff like trading or like other more advanced features like uh, setting up a reputation bond or paying a fee for listing an asset or burning BSQ. There's few advanced features which you can play around and learn about it, which you can, which are not related to these phases. These phases are only for making requests and doing voting and then seeing the results that's in this uh, cycle of um, at the moment one week and in the future one month. And then, yeah, at the end of the cycle is the result phase and then every application has all the data and creates the re vote result and then depends when somebody has made the compensation requests and he got voted okay by the majority, then um, his or her compensation request uh, became an issuance. And that's the important thing. At the moment, the, the UI is not 100% polished and there is still missing some more background information with pop-up explaining stuff. And one thing is, for instance, when you make a compensation request and in the vote uh, result phase, you don't really see are uh, at the moment it's missing a kind of like a pop-up telling you yeah your request got accepted and now you have issued uh, whatever amount of psq to your wallet you see it already in the in the transactions when you go to the transactions this transaction what uh, in the transaction screen the trans um, this transaction which was created for making your compensation request will become a issuance transaction it's you're not creating a new transaction it's just um, this um, output uh, from this uh, compensation request, uh, which is uh, yeah, intended to become BSQ, it's not valid BSQ until the vote result is over. And when the vote result is there and you have been accepted, then the network will interpret this output, this unspent transaction output, as BSQ. So that's, um, yeah. That's this connection from the issuance to this compensation request, which is not completely trivial and a little bit confusing. And we need more in the UI to make this more easy to understand and clear. That's great. So I hope that uh, you will find this information useful and you will check out the BISC app and play around with the testnet and uh, give us f more feedback on BISC forum or BISC Slack channel. And you can always ask a lot of questions there if you have any problems. Yeah. And I really would like to uh, to ask every, especially everybody who has contributed in the past uh, for BISC and will receive uh, tokens in the Genesis. And now it's the time where you cannot, where any mistake uh, has no consequences, where you can learn about more complex features without risking anything. And we need also, of course, testers. We need to go feed, uh, get feedback. Uh, the, at least the consensus part is very hard to change later. That will be probably hard work. So. It's a very, it's very critical, very complex piece of software where we need a lot of testers and uh, it runs already pretty stable. We didn't have any major issues. 
but uh, of course, the more testers and the more people who are playing around with it, the better. And for you as a contributor, it's the chance now to learn about it and to uh, to understand it and to also get a better idea of what the DAO is. It's a quite the new concept and it's quite, yeah, it, it's it's big and, con and, and complex. And for many people, it's easier when they use it and they do it directly and then it becomes more natural and more uh, practical, I think. Great. Uh, yes, I agree with you. I think that it's very important to put to use uh, the knowledge that we acquire about BSQ in practice to put it in pra to practice, and I'll do that too. And uh, uh, how long is this period? Uh, how long are you planning to have it as the test net before moving it's it? Not. Uh, it's not uh, concretely planned. It depends uh, how much problems we encounter. So far, pretty good. I mean, there was just one ma major issue with reorgs, but that's fixed already, uh, which was only a uh, stability issue. But besides, at the moment, we don't see any open big issues. Besides a lot of small stuff with like UI improvements, but that's all trivial small fixes and uh, not too much that doesn't have high priority for me. The big thing what's missing before going on mainnet are all kind of protection mechanisms when anything goes wrong, when there is a really critical bug or a critical security flaw and somebody can abuse this, uh, that we can control the situation and the DAO is not blowing up completely like the DAO, the Ethereum slugged DAO, where first they say code is law and then they make a hard work on Ethereum to undo the history. We don't want to get in such a dilemma. <clears throat> so we also will make a clear statement that are, when there are problems, we are trying to fix it. It's not the immutable uh, ledger like a Bitcoin uh, blockchain or whatever. It's a different model. It's a different uh, system. It's, it has a clear intention that uh, it has to serve as a governance and a funding model for BISC. And everything which acts against this intention will be corrected, that we are getting back to the target. That's the clear message. And when there is a bug and when somebody can abuse it to create tokens out of thin air and which are not, are, uh, yeah, you only can create token when you're this contribute and you get voted okay. And when somebody managed to find a way to create tokens in another way, we will undo this when we can, as far as we can. And we will build in a few different protection mechanisms to be able to handle such situations in the worst case. So that's one bigger thing, which is, missing uh it's yeah and the other biggest thing is testing 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 also and especially uh, on the technical side to try to create all kind of crazy transactions and see if they're really covered you cannot create this transaction in the ui but technically you can create those transactions try to break it try to yeah and that's of course that's a long and ongoing process that will never really end but at least we need to get to a level of good confidence where we feel more or less safe there is no 100% safety with such models and everybody has to be aware also when they are buying such tokens that it's uh, experimental software like Bitcoin itself. Uh, don't put your life savings in something like this and uh, start with small amounts. Uh, be aware that uh, yeah, that it's software and software has bugs. And um, yeah, we do the best what we can, but we are not perfect. So we need to make sure that um, it's been tested well and uh, as you mentioned, uh, all the protection mechanisms are in place uh, before it's on the mainnet, but even later, it's still going to be continuously improved. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So the very basics are a little bit, yeah, very hard to change because many things are consensus rules and you cannot change it without breaking. <clears throat> old and non-updated clients. Uh, there might be some hard forks when it's um, important things. We try to avoid it as far as possible. But maybe in one or two years, we are we need a hard fork when there are really important things to change. And when it's not when it's just a technical hard fork, like another project, like in Monero, they have a hard fork every half a year, and it's not the problem. Hard forks are usually a problem when it's more political political reasons, like it was with uh, Ethereum. <coughs> um, yeah, but uh, of course we try to improve on the non-consensus part, much easier to improve on the UI and all these um, parts, which doesn't uh, affect directly the consensus routes. Uh, we are very, it's like the normal application with every release, there will be small improvements uh, here and there. 
Okay, that's great. And um, do you have any other comments or anything that you would like to add in this video? Um, no, I think we covered uh, most. I mean, of course, this economic area is a very broad and there are people who try to build a uh, very kind of like scientific models, <clears throat> how to evaluate a, a, a value of a project or a token. And of course, there are very interesting uh, approaches and so on. And we started also trying to do, uh, yeah, to produce something like this at the end. For me, it's uh, I think there are so many unknowns and and uh, in, uh, yeah some some factors which influence their this valuation how much a token um, uh, yeah will be on the market uh, is so dependent on external factors. When Bitcoin goes up or down, it will influence BSQ for sure a lot. Also, uh, just from the trading part. More, uh, we see it when, uh, like last December or so, when Bitcoin is speaking, then of course our uh, liquidity also goes up and our trade volumes go up like hell. <clears throat> and so for me, it's, uh, I try to focus to make it, uh, yeah, to really focus on the te technical stuff and on the conceptual stuff to make it good. And I think when we are creating value for real people that they are working on a project in a very free and a very a non-hierarchical way they can do whatever they want at the end as long as it produces value for BISC they are welcome they can live in Honolulu and can work at, at four in the night it doesn't matter uh, I mean you don't have many jobs where you can work in that uh, way you don't have a boss you're, you're your own boss and you're the boss of the other contributors and uh, those people get an economic model where they get paid for their work they can make the living from this at the end the traders they have a censorship resistant uh, privacy protecting platform uh, which would not work in another classical model when it would be a normal startup with investors the investors would yeah would <coughs> apply at a certain level to regulatory pressure and so on so i think we are creating a lot of real value for real people and those people who are focusing on this i think you cannot do much wrong and in the worst case when or uh, when for whatever reason this token will have zero value and close zero value you have learned something you have done something interesting for you and you can use this for your life experience to go on so when you see it from this perspective i think you cannot lose and that's my right. main focus at the end i mean of course with money and the speculation in the crypto space is all completely crazy and a lot of has a lot of value and has zero real value and other projects have a lot of real value and have basically close to zero uh, monetary value like projects like Wikileaks or Wikipedia or many other NGOs. They are creating real big value for society and economically they have zero value. And that's actually the main uh, goal of the BISC DAO to bridge this together. Those who are creating real value for society, those uh, should get all the economic value. And that's very hard at the moment for this type of projects. Great, uh, then maybe I can summarize what we've covered um, in this video. So uh, a BSQ token is a colored coin based on the, BISC, uh, oh, sorry, on the Bitcoin blockchain. And um, the main purpose of the uh, BSQ token is to transfer the value from users of the BISC exchange of BISC uh, that is traders to contributors who uh, maintain and improve uh, BISC. As you mentioned, uh, we want to make sure that those who produce a lot of value are rewarded for their work and are incentivized to produce good work. And the people who are using the exchange or s some other project, they are actually uh, they're benefiting from the quality of the work and they are in return um, transferring some value from them to the contributors. Um, at the DAO, uh, BISC DAO, uh, with the Genesis transaction, 2.5 million BSQ tokens will be created, which are seeded with uh, 2.5 Bitcoin, Bitcoins. So one BSQ token is uh, 100 Satoshis. And uh, the supply of BSQ uh, 
uh, will be determined by the amount of the compensation requests, which will act as an inflationary pressure uh, and uh, trading and voting uh, and using BISC uh, in, in the form of voting or trading fees, uh, specifically trading fees, which will act as the deflationary pressure. And um, let's see, I think the testnet is already available. Uh, you can download, go to the BISC website and you can download the application and play around with it and um, give us your feedback, basically. <laughs> is there anything else that I should add? No, I think that was a great summary, like always. <laughs> great, hello. thank you. Thank you so much, Manfred. And um, so I hope that you'll enjoy this video. You enjoyed this video. And in the next video, we're going to talk about the technical aspect of BSQ tokens in more detail and also about uh, compensation requests and voting in greater detail. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.